it's so exciting. Thank you so much for joining us today. And it just says continue. I'm gonna to touch my iPad, there we go. So we're gonna make a couple of accessories today. Before we begin, I wanna remind everybody that this is being recorded. So if you can't watch the whole thing, you can always come back later and tell your friends about how great this class was. You gotta watch it on Michael's classes.com or michael slash classes.com and you can scroll down and look at all the classes that happened today we had heather kell this morning we had marielle mom and a girl with plans and planning with bumble and i hope you're all planned out um, and i hope you enjoyed all the other classes and there's also a chat button with a question box so you have if you have any questions feel free to put a question in the question box. If you can chat amongst yourself, if you wanna do that, you can. Go grab some snacks, enjoy. We're gonna have a good time. We have three projects today. We're gonna to be making a planner charm, planner charms like this, you'll see closer in a little bit. We're going to be making bookmarks with tassels on them, like this. And we're gonna be making uh, paperclip pom-poms. So, for the last one, you can maybe grab your kids and have them help you. It's super easy, super fun. So let's get started, why don't we? So let's put the camera from the top, here we go. So this is a planner charm. And the good thing about this is that it can come off your planner and you can put it in any planner really easy. The problem that we had earlier with Happy Planners is that it was really hard to attach charms to it because you have such a wide space in those discs but with this thing that we that I'm gonna that we all are gonna create today it's easily punchable you can put it in and put it out easily in any planner that you want so that's what I think is so great about this little planner charm and we're gonna make one today yay so the first thing you need for this project is to go through all your junk drawers and your kids drawers go through old jewelry and find any jump rings like this these are just metal circles that you're able to open and close. You can actually sometimes do it with your fingers, but sometimes you'll need pliers. These are long-nosed pliers. And this is just something I found. You can also use a wrench to open them. So you look for a couple of those. I actually found today a bigger one of these. And any charms that you have lying around your house, you can use for this project. I have an Eiffel Tower. I think I have, yeah, I have a little Eiffel Tower here. Cute. Any souvenirs that you've had from trips, any beads that you have, go look around and I'm sure you'll find a ton of things you can use. Now, if you don't, recently I took a trip to Michael's and I gotta say, their assortment of charms was off the hook. They had everything. They have unicorns and all the states and religious symbols and any possible charm you want to use, you can find at Michael's. So once you gather all your things together, we are going to take some packaging. This is acetate packaging that comes when you buy a Happy Planner or a Happy Notes. I always save mine. Hopefully you have some around the house that you can find. Go, they recently, a lot of the stores had sales, so a lot of people have been stocking up on Happy Notes. So maybe you still have some of this material around. So this is what it is. And we want this because it has the holes already punched. I don't know if you could see that. It has the whole, wait, if I, if I turn it, it just, you'll just have to believe me. You can't see it on the camera, but the holes are already punched and it was in, came with the planers like this. Okay, and it held everything in place. So we're gonna use that to make the base, the, the holder for our charms. So I'm gonna grab, you need a very, very sharp pair of scissors, or you can use scissors like this. This is from QVC, it's a, it's a set, came of a, a set of six, and I use them for everything, it's really amazing. So I'm gonna take off the top, and we're gonna take off the top that has the little hole where, where it's used to, uh, to hang up. I'm gonna take that off. And I'm just gonna use, for this project, the top three holes. So once I take off one layer, I just have one layer, so you can see the holes there a little bit. I'm gonna take about an inch, I'm gonna take three holes down and go in about an inch. And I'm gonna cut, let's see. And if you have a corner rounder, that's sturdy enough, you can round those corners. 
but I don't have one of those. So I'm going to be using my shears to round the corners because we don't want to hurt ourselves when we take out this planner charm. Okay. All right, so I'm going to round the corners just a little bit. And I'm going to round this one as well. Okay, so the next thing you need is a hole. Let me show you. Hole for the charm to go through. And you'll notice a metal circle. That's called an eyelet. We're going to set an eyelet today and punch a hole using a tool called a crocodile. We Are Memory Keepers makes this crocodile. And I learned recently that there are different kinds of crocodiles. So this is the eyelet setter and it also punches holes. It looks very intimidating, but it is, once you realize that it's not intimidating at all, it looks super like confusing. And when I first saw it, I'm like, I would never be able to use this. It is a lot easier than it looks. So on this side, we have a hole puncher. And this side, we have another, there's two sizes. I have a, a medium sized and like a really small one. I'm gonna use the medium size for this. And I'm gonna punch a hole in the corner, just near, near that corner up here. Which one was the, here we go. And I'm gonna put that acetate right between, here, I'm gonna do it very close to the camera so you can see. See where it's punching? Like that, I'm gonna use two hands to punch. And it's very easy. The good thing about this crocodile is that it can punch through anything. It's super strong, super sturdy. If you don't have a crocodile, you can maybe get away with using a regular hole punch, but as this is acetate, it's really hard. I was able to do it. I did a practice one earlier and I was able to punch a hole, but it took two tries and I kind of messed up the first time. So if you have a regular hole punch, try with a regular hole punch. But if you have the crocodile, this is an amazing tool. And if you really like to invest in a, in a super cool tool, this is one of them. So to make this look super professional and this, this hole is a little bit farther than, from the corner than I, what I would like, but we're gonna continue anyway. I'm gonna take an eyelet. These particular eyelets are American Crafts, but I know Recollection, Recollections makes a ton of them. And they come in all different colors and, and uh, not all sizes, but there are different sizes. You have to actually measure once you decide which eyelet you have there are different sizes here. So I'm gonna leave it at is, but these things turn so you can do different measurements for your eyelids. Let me just put that back in. Okay, so once you have your eyelet, this little metal thing, you're gonna stick it into the hole like so. I'm gonna put it really close to the camera. I'm gonna turn it around. You see that? So it's coming through the hole and the eyelet setter is gonna squish that metal in. Here's my eyelet setter. I'm gonna put the little thing that's coming out through the metal thing. Actually, I have to do it this way so it doesn't fall out. Here we go. Do you see I'm gonna push it and it's gonna squish the metal. I need two hands for this, but it's really easy. And there you go. There is our eyelet. See, it looks nice and professional. There's the back. And now you have a really professional looking charm holder and we're ready to make our charm. So you can either use a big one like this and that's what I'm gonna use today. I just found this keychain in my house. I'm just gonna take this thing off of it. If you don't, let me show you some other things that you can use. You can buy a packet of these kinds of different sized jump rings and make a chain with those, which I kind of did over here and I attached it with a lobster clasp. You can buy a package of lobster clasps, but I happen to have a whole bunch lying around. Or you can buy, this is from, doesn't seem to have a, oh, bead landing. It's from bead landing. And these are chains with little lobster clasps already on them. So if you can't find anything around the house or you want it to look super professional, you can buy a packet of these. I don't even think I need to use these today because I have enough stuff lying around. Another alternative, if you don't have a ring, again, I love using packaging and reusing packaging. This is from the Happy Planner, the storage pouch. 
It's the one, well, you know, the storage house looks like, but I will show you. It was this one, super cute. It came with this little chain and these you can find in all sorts of uh, different things like Happy Meals or whatever toys has to have them. And you can use this as your vehicle to, make, to hold your charms. Fits nicely in to the hole. So that's the easiest way to do, I think, to do it. So there you go. So you have part of it already. So once you have that, I'm gonna take a charm. This was actually an old earring that I lost one of the earrings. So this is the other one and I'm gonna use it as a charm. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Now, if you don't wanna use this method, if you don't have this kind of chain, if you wanna use a jump ring, I'll show you how to do it with that as well. Now, another charm I'm going to use today is the charm. Now, this is the Happy Planner charm that came with the bracelets. And this comes with the Planner Companion. Planner, this particular one came with this Planner Companion. You can find them at Michael's. It comes with all kinds of cards and stickers. There's a whole bunch of different varieties, but each one comes with its own little bracelet. And as I'm not a bracelet person myself, I thought I could use the charm because it's so adorable. And I'm gonna put it on this chain. So I'm just gonna take it out of the packaging and add it on. And the good thing about this project is that you can tailor any kind of charm, like collection of charms to whatever book you're using, to whatever happy notes or planner that you're using. Now this hole is too small for this, so I'm gonna need to add a jump ring. So I'm gonna take a jump ring. It's already open, but if I wanted to open it, I would use, I need a plier for each hand. Well, it depends on how strong you are. I'm not very strong, so I need two. And you just twist to open it. And you can twist to close it. So as it's open, just gonna slip my planner charm in, in there. Oh, it's not open enough. I'm gonna have to open it up a little bit more. Get it really wide. You have to get a good grip. There we go. And I'm just gonna put this through. Here we go. Once it's through there, then we can get it through. The chain. And then I'm gonna close it using those same tools. Oops. Actually, I don't need that. I can just close it first. It takes a little bit of practice. There we go, nice and closed. We don't wanna lose that charm. So then we're gonna add it to our chain. And you can add anything else. I have a little, I'm gonna add my Apple Tower here, super cute. So as I was saying, you could tailor these to any planner that you have which I think is cool, a travel planner. You can have travel charms. Oh my gosh, I'm just so in love with this one. So, and the good thing is you can take them in and out whenever you want. There we go. And there we have another set of charms for your planner. And it's super easy to remove these chains. So let's try it with a jump ring. It's also easy with a jump, a jump ring. You just take a jump ring. This one's already open, but not enough. I'm gonna try to do it with one hand. There we go. And then you just slip your charms in. And if you wanted a chain, here's a chain. Here, I have this, these beads that I just found. I'm just gonna add them on. Anything that you like that you have around the house. The kids can help choose if they want to put one on their happy notes. And you can just close that. And you have another set. Of course, <laughs> the levels are a little bit off on this one. You want to have one that's maybe two inches, one that's a half an inch, and maybe one that's an inch. You have different levels so you can see your charms. But there you go. I'm just going to take that off now. 
well, I have this one. So that's our first project. And let me give you examples of what I would use these for. So I love to make mini books out of the, the mini books that come to Happy Planner, little happy notes. I love to make little memory planners with them and I love to add charms to those. This charm is a happy disc, disc charm. So this is what I made from for um, while I was on the squad. The Happy Planner has a squad. They pick up 20 people every year to represent them on Instagram. They send them products and we make, we make projects for them to, that they'll showcase on their website and their, on their social media. So this is another one that I made and this would be a perfect thing to add charms to. Like if you had a tassel like this, which we'll make, that would be something great to add to this. This is another mini book I made also with the discs from the Happy Planner with different things I had around the house. And this is perfect. This would be something that would be great to add charms to. Just an example of what kinds of things to add charms to. Now, I'm a teacher. I teach in New York. And the last thing I would do is put a charm on my teacher planner. So that's not something that I would do. But charms for your planner. This is my on-the-go planner. It's perfect for something like this, like a fun planner. But it's not for my work planner. Just so you know that I'm not crazy. I wouldn't add this stuff, like something like this to my planner for work. All right, so my next project, I'm gonna put this aside for a moment. My next project is to make a bookmark and we're gonna put a tassel on our bookmark. So let me show you. Then the Happy Planner makes a ton of bookmarks. I'll give you an example. Here we go. Here's a whole bunch of examples of the bookmarks that they have, but if you wanted to, make your own, add tassels to it, and decorate it with your own stickers or washi tape, you definitely can do that. So here's another, this is acetate packaging that was from a smaller Happy Notes. So not the classic size, but I think it's a good size for a little bookmark. So I'm gonna cut as we did before. There we go. I'm gonna round those edges and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna take my crop a dial, quickly put a hole in the corner, take an eyelet, I'm gonna use a white one for this, stick it in the hole as I did before. Oops, it's gotta stay in the hole. Take your, your crop dial. You could just leave it without an eyelet. By no means do you think that you, don't think that you absolutely have to have an eyelet in there. I just think it looks professional. Okay, so once you have that done, you could put a tassel to it. I made one over here with some beads and some thread, so let's make one. Here's another example of one that I made. Here's another example. So for this, you're gonna need embroidery thread. So I have a couple of colors here to show you. Let's make a purple one so you can see it well. So for this, you're gonna need really sharp scissors and a small piece of cardboard. This is about, let's say two inches long, but however, however wide or whatever this part is, is how long your tassel is going to be, see? So I'll give you time to go get a piece of cardboard. Everybody has cardboard around their house. Hopefully you're just gonna cut a little, a little uh, rectangle and we're gonna start. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. Okay, let me tell you who makes this. I did get this at Michael's. It doesn't seem to have, let's see another one. Yeah, Loops and Thread makes this. They have all colors, and I can tell you they have all colors because I have all the colors. <laughs> so we're just gonna hold it down with our thumb, and this is so easy, the kids can help with this. You wrap it around. Just wrap it around as many times as you like until you think it looks about as thick as you'd like your tassel to be. Then I'm gonna cut it. I like to use fabric scissors because they're super sharp, but any sharp scissors are fine. Then before I take it off of this, I'm gonna cut another piece of string. 
You can use the same color or different. And I'm going to thread it under, I hope you can see this well, under here, like that. And then you're just gonna tie a knot. One with super tight and two, like this. Then we're gonna slide it off the cardboard. And we're gonna cut the bottom like this. But we're not done yet. We still have to make this part. You can use a different color thread or the same. I'm gonna use the same for this one. They also sell, I have some gold, some of this gold thread that looks really good on a tassel, but it's harder to work with. So I'm just gonna use this thread, the same color. And let's say a foot, I'm gonna cut a foot off. And I'm just gonna wrap it, I'm gonna leave a little bit off. And again, I'm gonna wrap it around. It's kind of tricky, but Maybe if I put it on the, here, we're gonna wrap it, squeeze it tight. Actually, I should make a knot first. Okay, so you see basically what it's gonna look like. But to make it more professional, we're gonna wrap it around a couple times. Like that. Super tight. And while we still have enough thread, we're gonna tie another knot. like so. And I'm going to do it twice just to keep it. And if you really want to keep it from fraying, you can add a little bit of adhesive. Some Elmer's glue is fine for this. It's going to dry clear. And you have a cute little tassel like this. So you can either attach it, just tie it. If you don't have any jump rings, that's fine. You just actually let me make these even. You put it through the hole. And you have a cute little tassel bookmark, which is not really for books, it's for your planner. <laughs> um, you can tie this in a knot and like so, or you can add beads to it. I'm gonna show you these beads that I found at Michael's that are super cute. I was so excited when I found them. This is a collection of wood beads. And I love these because you can either leave them and they're kind of neutral if you're a neutral person or you can paint them. And I did paint a couple. I'm gonna show you what I can find. I painted them using craft, just regular craft paint, the kind that you could find in those little bottles. Okay, so. I can't find the ones that I painted, but here's our more that I painted. So you can use these. These are made by Bead Landing. And I love that it comes with a whole bunch of different assortments, different sizes, and you can really go crazy with these kind of tassels. So to add, you can just leave it like this if you want to, or if you want to add a bead, you can either use wire. I'm gonna use wire because it's super easy to thread with the wire. So I'm going to okay, find some wire around here. Here we go. Any wire you have around the house is fine because you're not gonna see it really. I'm gonna cut off, doesn't matter how much you cut off because you can always change, make it shorter. So I'm gonna put the two together like this. And I'm going to thread it from, see this part is gonna be the top and it's gonna be rounded. So we're gonna put that through a jump ring that we're gonna to attach to our, to our bookmark. So we're gonna to have to fold it first and just thread through, or you can do it the other way. I'm gonna use these long nosed pliers to 
open it up there. And then you can just thread from the bottom too if you want. It's probably easier from the bottom to thread a couple of beads. And then you can do through your You can either go back up with it. I would cut these threads off, obviously. There we go. I'm going to, there we go. Twist it, you can twist it around itself or twist it back up through the beads. Let's try that. There we go. And then you can just shave it off the top. I hope you can see it's kind of hard to do, but doable if your wire is a malleable wire. It's not too hard to, to bend. There we go. So I would just cut these. I'm going to cut these top parts off. It's not really going to go anywhere. And you have a tassel for your bookmark and I would add a jump ring to it and there you go her second project is done now the last project that we're going to make today is a pom-pom paper clip there you go so we've got our charms we've got a paper you can also decorate this with washi tape but I don't want to spend too much time on this because we're running out of time and I really want to go through my last one it's my favorite one and the kids can join in on this one super easy you're going to need some either some cards uh cardboard or you can use first of all you need some yarn this yarn is from loops and threads and i love the bright colors that these came in a rainbow of colors i only put two but there were a whole bunch and this is a pom-pom maker i will show you how it looks like you don't need a pom-pom maker to make pom-poms, and I'll show you another way to do it. But this makes it so fun, and there's two in a pack, so if you have kids, they can both make one at the same time. They're not gonna fight over it. This is made by Clover. They have a whole bunch of sizes. This is the smallest size that that comes in. And I chose the smaller size because I wanted to make those smaller pom-poms, and this is what it's gonna look like. And this is what the pom-pom looks like when it's on a Paper clip. Do I have another example? This is what it looks like when it's when you're done making them and you're just gonna attach it to a paper clip. So let's get started making a pom-pom. First, I'm gonna make it with the pom-pom maker, and then I'm gonna show you how to make one if you don't have this. But really, these are very inexpensive. And Pom-poms are good for so many things. You can decorate your sneakers, you can decorate headbands with them. They make, they're great for Christmas gifts or birthday gifts to decorate packages. So I really think it's a fun thing to invest in. And for me, I'm just in love with my little maker. This, I just think this is the cutest thing. So it comes, these things open up like so. I'm gonna choose yellow. And we're going to oh, find the end of the yarn. We're gonna wrap around one side. We're gonna hold it, it gets a little tricky, but you just hold it, once you hold it, you're good. And we're just gonna wrap, it doesn't matter which way, if you go towards you or away from you. You're gonna go around one way and then you're gonna go back the other way. Once you fill the whole arc, you're gonna go back. And then you're gonna to go to the next one. Okay, you're just gonna bring the thread over and wrap around again. And you're doing two at the same time, okay? You'll see how quick and easy this is. It's so fun to do. Just in front of the TV or whatever, you're watching something on Netflix. Okay, here we go, some more. And then once you feel like you had enough, you're gonna fold it like that, so it becomes a circle. You're gonna take very sharp scissors or even better, fabric scissors, and you're just gonna cut 
down the middle of all of these. I hope you can see, there we go. And then you're gonna turn around the other side and do there. Okay. Then we're gonna put it down, and this is why it's so much easier with this tool than with another than with cardboard, is that you can completely do this hand this part hands-free. You wrap it around and you're gonna tie this super tight, make a knot, double knot, one, you tie super tight, and then you're gonna do it again. And then, like magic, you're gonna pull apart these two things and you'll have your cute little pom-pom. So it's adorable. So once you have that, then the fun part happens. You just clip off, because not everything is gonna be the exact same size. So you're just going to give it a little haircut. It's kind of messy, but then you have the cutest pom-pom and you don't even need glue with this. You could just tie it with this long part you have left onto a paper clip. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I have these cute little paper clips. Just thread it on. And you can tie it. Once and then twice. Now, if you do it this way, it is gonna move a little bit so you might want to dab a hot a little bit of a hot glue gun or even Elmer's glue I think is sufficient to keep that in place so then it makes a super cute addition to your planner because we love to pimp it up and make it adorable there you go how I mean I just think that's the cutest thing ever and so easy so if you have kids around bring them over because I'm going to show you how to make the same thing the same pom-pom without the tool, just in case you don't have it and you really wanna do it right now. But I do suggest getting one because they are so cute. You're gonna take a little piece of cardboard like that. Then we're going to trace two circles. You can use a cup, a glass, it really doesn't matter. You just need a circle. That I would say that is about three inches in diameter. But don't get hung up. I don't like to measure things. You make two of those. Can you see? I'm going to show you a little. See, there are your two circles. Then you need a circle for the middle. So what I'm using, of course, I'm going to use a disc. So I'm going to make a circle in that disc, in that a disc circle, in the a concentric circle, shall we say? There's one. Ooh, it's not completely even. <laughs> and two. So there you go. I'm gonna take very strong scissors and cut here. There you, uh, I'm gonna move it so you can see, see the circles in the circle. This is what they're gonna look like when you're done. You're gonna make the letter C, okay? Like this. So let's just show you real quick how easy it is. Maybe I'll just do one now because we're close to the end of our class. Again, remember that this class is going to be recorded and you'll be able to see it again so if you're stuck on something. If you forgot, it's okay. It's all online. Be sure to tell your friends to watch and there'll be other classes as well. I'm going to be teaching another class on August 7th. At four o'clock, it's going to be about um, using your planner for distance learning. So if you have children and they're going to be home, uh, going to be e-learning for quite a bit of the day, I'm going to talk about how you can use your planners to maximize your time and to organize everything, especially if you have multiple children, because it gets very confusing with all the Zoom classes they have. And there is, there are good ways to keep track and to keep every, everything organized papers organized. I'm going to have a whole bunch of tips and tricks on how to homeschool because I am a teacher. So I have some tips on how 
I don't want to call it homeschooling because it's not really homeschooling, virtual distance learning. But some of the tips will be good for homeschooling as well. All right, so there is the C. I'm going to use these because I know they work. <laughs> We're going to put them together like this. And then anybody is old like me, you remember this was big in like the 80s, 70s and 80s. Everyone used to make pom-poms. They were everywhere. You're going to wrap it around. We're going to keep those aligned and just wrap it around. So easy for kids to do. I would say even five-year-olds could do this. Maybe not three and four. But definitely five, six, seven-year-olds will have no problem doing this. So they can help you. And put something on their own mini planner if they have mini if they have planners of their own. Here we go. We're just going to go all the way around. Now you'll see the quality of this pom pom is not going to be as nice, but it's still going to be a pom pom. It's still going to be cute. I always like to go around. Try to give you options if you don't have something, because I know sometimes it's hard to get materials. Not everybody lives near Michael's or has the patience to, to order online. I don't like waiting for things personally. <laughs> All right, so once you wrap it around as many times as you like. Now, just to remember, the size of your pom-pom is not decided by how big this part is. It's decided by how big how long this part is. So if you want a short, a smaller pom-pom, you're gonna use a, maybe an expander disc for this, all right? Or a shorter one, you can use a mini disc or a quarter to, to make a longer pom-pom, okay? So then, same principle, we're gonna cut along the middle. You see how it opens here? I have two. You're just gonna take your scissor and go down like this. Oops, there we go. Go all the way. Ugh. It's a little more difficult than using the, and you're gonna cut a little bit of the cardboard too, that's okay. Let me try that again, because it's a little messy. Now, the hard part about this is keeping everything together. There we go. Now, I could have sworn that I saw one time, one of those little kits that Michaels has. You know how they have kits? little um, art kits for kids. I could have sworn they had a pom-pom one in there, but I went to go get it and I couldn't find it. Like made especially for kids, but. All right, so that, now that you have all your things together, take another. Now it's not very even, looks pretty messy. But remember, we can give it a haircut after. I'm gonna turn it over. I didn't quite get all the pieces in there, but it's okay. We're gonna make a double knot. One. <laughs> it's looking kind of sad, but trust me, it won't when I'm done. Two. And then you take hold those long pieces together, like so. And then we're just going to trim around. This is the fun part, making it around. And again, I really love this idea for headbands. If you want to decorate a headband or sneakers or flip-flops or beach bags, there's so many things you can do with these little cute little pom-poms besides just putting, in, putting them on a paper clip. Do I have another paper clip? Yes. So there you go. There's our last little project. And I see we have a couple minutes left. So can we go maybe to questions, if anybody has a question. Sure. Hi, Christine. Hi. A couple questions um, in regards to the pom-pom, since you just finished. Can you tell us the name of the pom-pom tool that you used on the yes. smaller version? Clover is the name of the mark. Is that what you're asking? Yes, perfect. Clover. Thank you very much. I know that was a question. And um, do, you, do you have any... Um, tips on how to keep an eyelet from splitting when you're, when you're um, pushing them together. Are there from any- Splitting, you know, they're breaking apart? 
that means you're again. pressing too hard. You don't need to press that hard. You're just, you're just folding the metal down. So if it's breaking apart, either you're using the wrong size, maybe using the wrong size of it, that that's, might be what's making it split. Perfect. Maybe, or okay. maybe you're just doing putting it on the wrong side. See this part that goes up, that's, so the colored side goes down that. Maybe you're just doing it upside down and that's what's making it split. Okay. Like that. Very helpful, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there you go. Do you, uh, do, you, um, do you have any tips on something that you can use outside? If somebody accidentally threw away the acetate wrapping that comes with the, pl the planner to make the first two projects, do you have any tips on what they can use in place of? Um, in place of the acetate? I thought of that. And you possibly can use like a harder cardstock a really hard cardstock. The problem with that is that you're gonna have to use a hole punch to punch every hole because the Happy Planner punch won't punch through acetate and it probably won't punch in a material that's sturdy enough. Gotcha, so it's really key so to, to keep, so the, keep the acetate. Have, exactly, it's, but you'd have to punch okay. with, a, with a hole punch, each one and then make the lines to make it go through, to make it punchable. Or, oh, here's an idea. You can use a tab. Let me find an example of one in my room. Here we go. If you have one of these snap-in tabs, that's a possible, that's a possible thing. Can you can e easily punch a hole through that and use that. It's not as sturdy as the acetate, but it would definitely work. But awesome. I'm going to... <laughs> Two more questions I think uh, we want to get in because I know we are we're running out of time, but mm -hmm. can you share, you showed very quickly a disc that you had um, on what, as one of your charms. Can you tell us how you were able to um, punch a hole in the disc? It was actually, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, this, yes. actual... I, wish I, I wish I was able to punch a hole through the disc. This was something I bought off Etsy and I have no idea how they punched a hole through the disc. But that's okay. a really good question. I'm wondering if my crop dot, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Because this punches through metal, but I don't think it's gonna punch through metal this thick. This I bought on Etsy. And then, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Last but not least, can you please share with us your social channels, where people can find you? Oh, of course, yes. I'm super easy to find on Instagram. It's Twinkle Plans Her Day. And on YouTube, it's again, Twinkle Plans Her Day. So there you go. Hope everybody had a good much. time planning today and, and making things. I made certainly made a big mess of my desk. <laughs> I think the next hour will be spent cleaning it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you at my next class. Oh, I'm, up, I'm in the front here, let's later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget that I have another class. If you have children and their distance learning, you may not even know yet, but at some point, I think we're all gonna be stuck at home with a lot of Zoom calls. So if you want to join that class, I would recommend it for that. I have a lot of tips on how to deal with distance learning and to homeschool. There's not really homeschooling. Um, so I hope to see you on Friday. I think it's Friday, uh, August 7th or 8th. It'll be on the, actually, I'll, I'll be advertising it on my Instagram for the next couple of days. And you'll find it on the Michael's website, classes slash classes.com. On the upper left, you can scroll down. It's pretty easy to find and really easy to sign up as you all signed up today. So thanks so much.